Uh, hi, how's everyone doing there today? Today is uh, Tuesday and it's July 20th. I'm here to report on some of the um, research that I did today over at Yad Vashem. I had a pretty uh, productive day there. And um, what I focused on today mostly was looking at some of the uh, research um, uh, literature and video testimony to try and get a grasp on the difference that Ravensbrück concentration camp had uh, over the other camps because of the fact that it was strictly a woman's camp. And I also looked at uh, some aspects of film today as well. So let me take a look first of all at some of my notes here that I took. Uh, I have them on the computer so I'm just going to kind of go along here. Um, I looked at some notes today, some research that talked about films with women as resistance fighters. Uh, and one of the movies that they highlighted was Hannah Senish, which uh, is a fantastic movie. It's called Hannah's War. And Hannah Senish is a young girl who had uh, immigrated to Israel, to what was called Palestine at the time. And then when the Holocaust broke out, she joined the uh, British uh, Air Force and wanted to parachute back in into Europe to save other Jews. And she was eventually caught and would not give away any of the secrets of the British um, Air Corps and was executed. And the movie is absolutely fantastic. Uh, Hannah is buried here. She's a national hero in Israel. And she's buried here at Mount Herzl uh, Cemetery, which is for all famous dignitaries and so forth, and prime ministers and presidents, uh, which is right next to Yad Vashem on the Mount of Remembrance, all very appropriate for the name. Uh, it, the, the article I was reading said Jews in uh, Holocaust films were often portrayed as meek and passive, depicted almost like defenseless children and or women who perished without any kind of resistance towards the Nazis, uh, or survived simply by relying on the protection provided by some other uh, male individual. In movies such as Exodus, which is uh, a movie that's been around a long time, Escape from Sobibor, Cast a Giant Shadow, uh, they said that women are, those were examples, women are featured in very minor character roles following the orders of the male leaders in almost all instances. Recently, some movies have strived to depict the women differently, Hannah's War being one of them. Uh, depicting her as daring and taking part in very uh, dangerous resistance activities. Senesh, Senesh's movie, The Story, has a very feminist message submerged within it, and that is that it affirms the myth of the Zionist and Israeli woman soldier, that uh, in fact they, they can be quite fierce uh, when called upon. But most Holocaust films depict the women in minor roles. They're shown stereotypically in secondary uh, roles, secondary characters they play. Some films that, however, make them the center of the film's focus, they uh, mentioned were The Diary of Anne Frank, of course, The Shop on Main Street, which is a very old movie back from the 1930s or 40s, and quite honestly, I one that I have not uh, had the chance to um, get a hold of and see, but I'm going to see if it's on their uh, archive server, their visual server, when I'm here this week. Another movie, Julia, and Playing for Time, uh, which I did see, with his, which is the story of Fania Fenelon, uh, who played in the um, Nazi orchestra in Auschwitz. And, and there, they're shown as regular people with ideals, uh, and these films convey a very reassuring message of victory uh, conquering evil. The good is identified with the heroine in this particular movie. And the heroic survivor is spiritually strong in these movies. She, uh, in this case, playing for a time, Fania Fenelon is a believer. She usually believes uh, strongly in her monotheistic god, She's an eternal optimist who believes in people and humanity and the ideals of modern democratic Western societies. These are the values that are eventually vindicated because of their heroines, tormentors being defeated. 
The film does reconfirm the idea, however, that one must struggle for survival, that one must never give up or give in. In Anne Frank and in Main Street, the heroine does not survive. Uh, and the interesting thing is, of course, you know, any of you who have seen Anne Frank, we know that the movie never shows Anne Frank at the end and just leaves us hanging knowing we know what happened to Anne Frank. She died in Bergen-Belsen, so there's no secrets there. Uh, but the movie doesn't, um, uh, at least the original movie doesn't take you there. The uh, remake does. They, they finally remade it and, and took the movie to the end where she does wind up. These are films, however, that disconnect the heroine from the political and social reality of the Nazi terror. The first attempt to place a Jewish uh, heroine in the context of an actual concentration camp is this movie called Playing for Time. And again, it's a movie about a woman who, she plays in the arc, uh, arc, Auschwitz Orchestra, which keeps her alive, her music ability. We as the viewers are no longer spared the details of the daily routine of how they're dehumanized and depersonalized in Auschwitz. And neither is the heroine in this movie, Fania. It is an absolutely uh, enjoyable movie. Uh, it's well done. I haven't seen it for years, but I remember when it first uh, appeared on television many, many years ago. It was quite uh, a movie. So with that, I'm going to kind of wrap that up here, uh, and I'll pick up my next little mini lecture on women in Robinsbrook, because basically I'm running out of time.